Barcelona so yes. we're tracing all over the world. Honestly, you're going to do all that? Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're okay? Yeah. First question, of course, had you, had you heard about Patrick O'Connell? Um, the answer is no, and it's uh, much to my dismay. And uh, well, then I started to read up the history of the man himself, what he has done, what he's done in the game what he did at uh, Barcelona as well too. It's absolutely unbelievable. The story has come through a distant relatives that he did run guns. Patrick was on the left, the family was on the left. Well, he could have been put in prison if it had been found out. So he's a, a bit of a womaniser. He is supposed to have been having some sort of a relationship with the daughter of one of the directors of the club. Oof. So he might have had an irate father after him. This shitter who treated them all so badly deserted them, left them in poverty. Él siempre va a hablar de que el fútbol había que jugarlo con velocidad. Rápidamente hacer una transición muy rápida de la defensa a la delantera y ser muy resolutivo. El monopolio que hasta entonces habían tenido el Barcelona, el Atlético de Bilbao y el Real Madrid, que eran los únicos equipos que habían ganado la Liga. So the first person that signed the jersey was Johan Cruyff. Cruyff, Beckenbauer, David Beckham, Roy Kaman, and Neil Gann behind the project. We're here today in Manchester via Dublin, Belfast, <laughs> Glasgow, Barcelona, Seville and Mexico. There's an amazing feeling to carry the bus onto the pitch. It just felt right and it felt that Patrick had come home to Seville. <laughs> consiguió su mayor trofeo precisamente con, con el de entrenador. Entonces eso le dio mucha fama. En agosto 36-7 jugaba el Barça aquí, ¿sí? Aquí, sí. Y aquí. hiciste, ¿no? En este campo. Sí, ya sabíamos que venía huyendo de la, de la, de la guerra de España. Uh -huh. The new ruler of Spain rides into the city of his conquest. Son los años más duros del franquismo y no hay una oposición. Uh -huh. O estaban en el exilio, o estaban en las cárceles, o los habían fusilado. Curiosamente, O'Connell no es de curado. Yo no sé por qué. Es un enigma. Es el olvido de tanta gente como el señor O'Connell que estamos hablando y otros miles que han habido antes y que han dado muchas cosas por el club y no existen. No, lo tienen todo tapado. Y pierden una cosa, pierden el, el corazón. Eh, él ha entrenado al Santander con notable éxito y en Sevilla entrena los dos equipos. Entrena al Betis, lo hace campeón de liga, y después entrena al Sevilla, que lo hace segundo clasificado. Had you heard about Patrick O'Connor? No. And the more I hear the story, the more ashamed I am that I didn't know. Never, never heard about him at all. I think it's the most compelling story I've heard in football for a long, long time. You've got to hear this, you've got to listen to this. This is incredible stuff. Very few people would know to be brutally honest, that the man ever existed. I think that's tragic. Tragic. 
sad and tragic. He disappears off the map, you know. How can that possibly happen to someone like that? It's, it's, like, it's like Guardiola just suddenly disappearing. For all that greatness, he ends up uh, living alone in London, destitute on the streets, uh, dies in a pauper's grave, and is lying there for years and years and years. It is just extraordinary.